Hi friends, so today is Cinco de Mayo and I want to make a tequila cocktail for you with Malort. That doesn't suck. And in fact, I think it's quite delicious. Since moving to Milwaukee and having easy access to Malort, the bitter wormwood liqueur that, uh, you know, taking shots of in Chicago is sort of a, a rite of passage. Um, it's very, very bitter stuff and almost impossible to work into a drink without it just like taking over. Um, but I, you know, haven't given up and I came across this cocktail on Eric Castro's Cocktail Limelight series the other week. Uh, it was called the Siesta and it was a tequila cocktail uh, with a little bit of Campari, just like a quarter ounce of Campari and grapefruit. And I was like, you know what? Campari's a bitter liqueur. Malort's a bitter liqueur. I wonder if the two could be interchanged with a few other tweaks. So I gave it a shot and I'm quite pleased with the way it came out. And I'm gonna call this drink the wake up call because uh, that's what you're gonna need after a few of these and, and a siesta. Now real quick before we continue, I just wanna give credit where credit's due. The Siesta cocktail that I'm basing this off of uh, was created by Katie Stipe, a New York City bartender in I think 2006. Um, so anyway, that cocktail is kind of a riff off of a margarita, which is a tequila daisy, you know, a sour that gets its sweetness from liqueurs. Her cocktail uh, called for one and a half ounces of tequila three quarter ounce lime juice, a half ounce grapefruit juice, a quarter ounce of Campari, and I think three quarter ounce of simple syrup. Um, I wanted to tweak that a little bit to kind of work a little bit more with the Malort. You know, with Malort being such a strong flavor, I thought it needed something a bit more intense to stand up to it. So I decided to split the, the base spirit here and go with an ounce of Blanco tequila and then a half ounce of a nice uh, Mezcal. Um, I think that mezcal kind of really pushes through and balances out the Malort better than just tequila alone. I'm still gonna go with the same ratios of lime and grapefruit. I think that flavor combo is gonna work well with the Malort, which almost has a grapefruit-like pithy bitterness uh, to itself. And then instead of simple syrup, because it's an agave cocktail, I'm gonna use uh, agave nectar. Um, and I'm gonna do like a, like a scant half an ounce, like a little bit less than half an ounce. Um, I think that will balance it nicely. Finishing touch is I'm gonna do a, a regal shake with the grapefruit peel. I think those oils are gonna add a really bright pop that's gonna like carry this drink and kind of marry all the flavors together. All right, so uh, let's get into it. So uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna peel two like large swaths of uh, grapefruit here and you'll see why as i mentioned the the regal shake um one of my favorite techniques let's get some uh some sweetener in there first it's you know a little thicker and so we'll use the rest of the ingredients to sort of rinse out the, the jigger um, also, I find that agave incorporates into drinks um, well enough that you don't really need to make like an agave syrup. Um, bars I've worked at have done like a like a two to one agave syrup in the past, but I just think for especially if you're at home, you know, just use less of it if you're trying to control the the sugar, um, and then you aren't putting more water in your cocktail. So I'm gonna add that to the mixing tin here. And let's get to our juices. So three quarter ounce lime juice. Um, this juicer, by the way, this is the OXO juicer. It's terrible. I do not like it. I do not recommend it. I'm looking for a new juicer. So if you have a juicer you want me to try out, let me know. Um, like meaning if you, a brand that, that makes juicers. Um, or, or anyone else, if, if you have a recommendation, let me know in the, the comments below. Like even just like the, the cheap um, enameled juicers that you would get, like a 
restaurant supply store, I feel like are better. Cause it's like, you can't see it, but there's now juice all over. And in a home environment or even, I mean, a professional environment for that matter, it's not really gonna fly. Okay, so lime juice in the tin. Now let's do grapefruit here. So I'm gonna break this down into a piece that I can manage to get in the juicer. Actually, you know what? I'm just gonna I'm just gonna squeeze it because I just need a half ounce and really that's more than an adequate way to do that, right? Alright. Now on to the spirits. So most importantly, got our Malort. I'm gonna throw a quarter ounce of this to the cocktail. That was uh, way more than a quarter ounce. Let me let me just put that in there. I'll I'll take care of that before we actually make the drink. A Malort rinse in the coop. All right. Quarter ounce more. Now let's do half ounce of the mezcal. This particular one is the Banez. Banez. It's a uh, Espadine and Barrio agave. I assume Barrio is another agave because Espadine sure is. Uh, I think it, it's really nice and it was under 30 bucks. I don't know. A little sus. All right. And we'll take our giant bottle of Blanco tequila. For cost savings, you know, I, it makes sense to get the 1.75 for deal with that later for your average home bartender. I think um, it's a little hard to work with. All right, well, that's everything in the glass. Only one last step here for the Regal Shake. I'm gonna take my my uh, grapefruit peel, the, the skin side, like the exterior side facing towards the tin. I'm just gonna express all those oils and then I'm gonna drop it right in. So now all that's left is to ice the tins down shake it up. Um, I'm gonna get rid of this uh, Malort here. This was not part of the, the thing, the Malort rinse. Not necessary since it's in the cocktail. And um, you know what? I got this all set up and I forgot ice, so I will be right back. Oh yeah, and if you're at home and you're not on camera, um, definitely chill your glassware in the freezer before making the drink. I just have it not chilled so it's clear and you can easily see what the cocktail looks like in the glass. Where did I put this? Eh. That works, right? You can you can see that. All right, so I've got my ice. So add that to the tin. Never shaken a cocktail sitting down before, but um, yeah, there's a first time for everything. All right, so you good hard shake for about 10 to 12 seconds. Uh, it's really gonna break up the ice, aerate the cocktail, and incorporate the oils from that peel. You know what else I forgot? A strainer, be right back. All right, got my Hawthorne strainer, and I'm gonna strain this cocktail. To garnish, let's do something pretty with our uh, grapefruit peel here. Let's see, that's not gonna work. Eh, it's been a while since I've um, <laughs> been behind the bar. We'll just set that garnish aside. I think the grapefruit's gonna be very present because of the, the regal shake. On the nose, I'm getting the mezcal first and foremost, and then it's a little of that grapefruit. Malort doesn't really have a smell per se. It's 
the other reason why the rinse isn't a thing that that was a mistake. Don't do that. Um, really excited to try this. Oh yeah. That's like, if you like grapefruit, if you like grapefruit, you will really like this drink. Um, like the Malort just reinforces the fact that there's grapefruit here. And because he did the Regal, the Regal Shake, that, that grapefruit oil is just so intense in the finish that it just tastes like a dry yet juicy, bitter grapefruit through and through. Of course, with the agave spirits coming through, that little bit of, I wouldn't even call it smoke, but yeah, I guess smoke or char on the, the agave from the mezcal. This is, I mean, just really good drink. This is um, quite a delicious wake up call. So I, I hope you've enjoyed this Cinco de Mayo special. I know I haven't done a cocktail video on this channel in a long time, but it just seemed fitting, like something I wanna do. I haven't made a video in, what, almost almost uh, like five months now. It's basically been since Vlogmas and I miss it. I miss it. So also, in my professional life, I'm no longer making cocktails. So this has sort of become a hobby for me again. Um, I'm not just like, you know, don't want to think about cocktails when I'm at home, but now now that I'm not making them, you know, it's, it's sort of become a hobby and I thought I should maybe share some of what I know from bartending for the last 10 years with you guys and uh, just try some delicious drinks along the way. All right, if you've made it this far, you're awesome. Make sure you have subscribed and hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm. It helps suggest this video to other people so more people can learn how to make Malort cocktails that don't suck. All right, cheers.